in what may be one of the most ominous statements yet, as fears of conflict, violence, and maybe even civil war are on the rise. A Trump supporter speaking to CNN said that should the former president not be reinstated soon, there will be civil war. Now, I'm mostly kidding. The person did actually say this. It was just one guy outside a Trump rally. I don't completely disagree, and that's the point, but come on. This is becoming a trending story. The Hill is reporting it. CNN and leftist journalists are running with this, saying Trump supporters are calling for civil war. Oh, no. Well, the discussion has been happening for a long time. Just last night, we had Adrian Curry on the show, and we were talking about the prospect of a peaceful divorce that many of the states in this country do not want to live the same way as the other states, and that before things get out of hand, there needs to be a peaceful divorce. Now, I think that's a bad thing. I really do. We got to keep our focus on what China has been doing and the rise of these international conflicts. The U.S. breaking apart is terrifying. But the sad reality is it may be true. Now, this one Trump supporter said there could be a civil war, and he may be right. We've been dealing with a culture war, a cold civil war, as some have called it, and it's gone hot. We may be in an era of fourth and fifth generational warfare, so maybe it won't actually go into full scale war. Maybe there will just be a country breaking apart. But what are we hearing now? Tucker Carlson saying earlier that Joe Biden's administration is spying on him, at least according to a whistleblower who spoke to him. The left is saying Tucker's lying. But we've already seen the tit for tat. Adam Schiff spies on a journalist. So then Trump spies on Adam Schiff. And here you go. Both sides willing to use power to a certain degree. Republicans seem less likely to use it, but both sides willing to use power because they feel that we are in some kind of conflict. The left says that Republicans are evil. The right says the Democrats are evil. And I know, I know, I know many of you are already saying, yeah, well, our side is true and correct. And it may be that one side is more correct than the other. Most of you know, my bias does not lead, uh, lead, lead me to the Democrats, of course. But all that matters is that people are drumming up this conflict because they do not respect what the other side is saying, nor do they believe them. And now we're seeing something interesting. Several states have been sending either police or National Guard to Texas, to the Texas border because Texas feels like the federal government has abandoned them, shutting down the wall. And more and more videos are emerging of people rushing across the border. This could result in several states saying no confidence in the federal government. Now, I think we've seen harder times in the past, but the question isn't right. The question isn't, is it harder now than it's ever been? The question is, will this lead to something more serious or something worse? Perhaps California is banning state travel to several states, West Virginia, Florida, and a few others. The divide is happening. And I don't know what we could do to actually stop it. And at the same time, as we're having this clear conflict between political factions, there is an economic crisis. Gas prices have reached a, and I think we're dealing with like a seven year high. Prices are skyrocketing. And we're only about six months in to Joe Biden's presidency. Naturally, this is going to cause very serious tension. So maybe this one lone Trump supporter saying hey, there's going to be a civil war. Maybe we can look at that story and say, come on, the hill, it's one guy. Or maybe there's a reason why they're showing the story. It doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. It matters that both sides are looking at this saying that it's going to happen. They believe it. They want it. Not everybody does, but it's certainly becoming. Well, people are starting to believe that it's inevitable, and that's why they call for peaceful divorce. Let's take a look at some of these stories, the the spying the sending troops to the border, the conflict. This is getting creepy. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to our exclusive members only section. Last night, we had the wonderful and amazing Adrienne Curry. She's absolutely incredible. And in the bonus segment for TimCast.com, she talked about the deep, dark secrets of Hollywood that they're basically open secrets. These are things we can't talk about on YouTube. They're very serious conversations. You'll want to check this one out. But when you support TimCast.com, you're also helping our newsroom. We, we just hired, I think, four more people to do production and news for TimCast.com. So we are expanding rapidly. If you think we're doing a good job and, uh, you, and you want to see more of this, then please become a member at TimCast.com. Like this video, subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends. Let's read this story. Look at this. 3,695 shares. Trump supporter warns CNN reporter of civil war. 
if former president not reinstated soon. Now, could there be something to this? Well, Arizona is conducting an audit. Matt Brainerd told me on Timcast IRL to buckle up for what's about to come. I've not seen any evidence, but certainly there are many people who support the president who are very confident something is coming. Well, here's one Trump supporter. The Hill reports CNN reporter Donnie O'Sullivan spoke with several supporters of former President Trump ahead of his first post-presidential rally on Saturday, many of whom told him they fully expect the real estate mogul to be reinstated before the end of the summer and warned of potential political violence in America if he's not. He didn't lose. I know he didn't lose, one woman told O'Sullivan, indicating she believes unfounded claims made by Trump and other Republicans that widespread voter fraud led to an unfair election that swung in President Biden's favor. Now I'm going to pause right there and just say this. As I explain in terms of the Civil War, it doesn't matter who's right. It matters. So certainly it matters to a certain degree. OK, so let me, let me walk that back. When I say that Joe Biden won, you turn on the TV, they say, here's the vote count. Joe Biden won. Joe Biden's in the White House. A lot of people seem to think that there's fraud. We've not seen the evidence. I have had these conversations. I've seen a lot of people mention circumstantial evidence. OK, I defer to Matt Brainerd, who said, buckle up and we'll wait and it'll take time. So be it. I'm willing to see any evidence that comes out for the time being. There isn't any. There's some circumstantial evidence of some things. But Donald Trump is not the president. Joe Biden got 81 million votes. And you've heard my conversations. If you saw the special bonus segment with Steve Bannon, I think what happened is I've long maintained is that Trump got oceans 11. And the way I describe that is the year before they were doing a bunch of programs like vote in the park. They were uh, changing the laws. They had mail in voting. They were doing everything in their power to play the long game. And I think Trump didn't get it. But We'll see what happens. What you need to understand about the left and the current iteration of this Cold War or Cold Civil War, whatever it is, is that the left has something technically right. The leftists believe this fascistic or, or I should say they operate under this fascistic principle that there is no truth but power. That's not correct. There is truth. There is objective reality. But in terms of politics, power can sometimes trump the truth. And that's horrifying. And what that means is, if there are people who are lying, cheating and stealing and they have the power to do that, then the lies become law. Not that it's true. We know some things aren't true, but they maintain that power. So you talk to me about what you think it means to win. I'll tell you those who have the power won. It doesn't mean they're correct, but we'll see what happens with this audit. I'm willing to wait. They just wrapped it up and we'll go over the, the certain uh, uh, stories that are coming out about this. But what did this guy say? They say many of the supporters who gathered for the Saturday rally in Wellington, Ohio, wore memorabilia and carried signs and slogans saying like Trump won and Biden sucks. It's about all of them and 2020 and the next one. Another woman told O'Sullivan about her Trump won t-shirt. O'Sullivan pressed the woman on the election's results saying, but he lost though in 2020, right? No, she responded. A third group of Trump supporters indicated before the rally that the one message they hoped to hear from the former president is that he's coming back. Trump has reportedly been pressuring allies in conservative media and other confidence to push his claim that the election was stolen and suggest he will be reinstated as soon as August. There is no mechanism by which such reinstatement could happen. That's true. When I've talked to Steve Bannon and Matt Brainerd, they've just said we are in uncharted territory. That's it. I've had a few people mention to me privately saying, I respect that you had them on to say these things. Of course, the things they said YouTube bans you for. But they felt like there's been a lot of claims without evidence that there's been several months where they're like, this is going to happen in March and this is going to happen in April and then things don't happen. That's fine, though. I respect their right to their process. I look forward to seeing what they present and we will talk about it when the evidence comes out. For the time being, the only thing we can say is that Bill, Mar Bill Barr mentioned there was some fraud. Um, a lot of people don't like Bill Barr. The left hates him and the right hates him. He didn't do a, a comprehensive investigation. At least many Trump supporters seem to think so, and they're not happy with the results. But it seems to be right now, the only thing we have is that, yeah, James O'Keefe caught some fraud, but not enough to affect the outcome of the election. And you need to make sure you do not underestimate your rivals. Coming into 2022, if you want to win and 2024, you can't operate under the assumption the system doesn't work and that you lost because. And this is something Steve Bannon said to me. You get a lot of people who are demoralized who believe these things they're not going to show up. And I think Matt Brainerd said something like that as well. The idea is you need to make sure people believe that you go out and vote and you can win. 
So I'll put it this way. Sorry. I know people want to believe there's a lot of evidence. There's not. There are certain uh, lawsuits that I thought should have gone through. There were process uh, uh, claims and they were shut down by the courts in what seemed to be really trashy manners. Uh, uh, but for the time being, we're going to see what, what the Arizona audit, audit gets us. And then we got to see what happens in Fulton County in Georgia and then Wisconsin. And there are some really confident Trump supporters. But I'm not going to sit here and claim things exist that I have not seen. I've certainly seen some, seen some interesting bits of evidence. I digress, though. Let's get back to the politics at hand. Quote, he's coming back soon, and you guys are going down, a Trump supporter in Wellington identified as Ron told O'Sullivan, sparking laughter from others in his group. The military already knows it was a fraud. He won by over 80%. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not believe that. Look, you want to come to me and claim that in 2016, they didn't expect this and Trump got a narrow victory. That's what Bannon told me. Bannon said to me that they like, look at the numbers in 2016. They did not expect that. Trump did really, really well in 2020. Now, of course, Bannon has some very specific opinions. You can't say on YouTube. But this, that, that, this idea, look, if something comes out of Arizona, I think it'll be controversy. And that's it. The left will make their claims. They're already doing it, saying the Republicans are tampering. It, let me put it this way. I could make a video and say a bunch of things and just get banned. I could make a video and just tout whatever the mainstream media says and just half the time be lying because the media lies. Or I can say this. Look at the bigger picture. Is there going to be violence in a civil conflict? I believe we are inching towards that every day. It doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. It doesn't matter what claims are being made. It matters that people believe them. The left believes what they believe. The right believes what they believe. And that's what you need to understand. Now, you can choose to believe what you want. I'm not telling you I have all the answers and I, and I know everything. In fact, I bet a lot of you probably know more than I do. The fact remains who will uh, uh, that they're, they're, we're inching towards conflict and someone is going to have more people than the others or at least more confidence. They want to mention at, uh, Ron continued, he's coming back before the middle of August. And what if that doesn't happen? O'Sullivan asked. We're going to be in a civil war because the militia will be taking over. And the man responded, a self-described member of the right wing three percenters militia group who attended the rally told O'Sullivan, and he was at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th when a mob of Trump supporters breached the complex. This guy said he wasn't actually in there. He went on to say, it, you know, I don't think anybody should have went inside. But when you're worked up in the moment and the adrenaline is pumping, you know, it just happens. The man in a Kevlar vest said one woman told O'Sullivan she believed that the insurrection was completely staged. I know that's not true because we have excellent journalists who have been here who were on the ground and watched it happen and knew some of the people who were there. Or I should say, recognize them from other events. Maybe. Sorry. I think a bunch of people got worked up, got really angry and stormed into the Capitol. And I think some people were let in by cops. But here's where we go. Here's, here's where we're at. Check this out from the Hill. Arizona's Maricopa County to replace all voting machines after GOP audit. I'm going to stress this again. You go ahead and do your research. Believe what you want to believe. What I want to talk about is big picture stuff. Republicans right now, many, not for the most part Republicans, but Trump supporters are calling out this as suspect saying we, we audit the machines to make sure they're working properly and then you remove them. Either that's saying you don't like the fact that someone checked your machines and, and is trying to hold you accountable or want to replace the machines with ones that haven't been checked, which is just no matter which side you're on. The left is saying we must replace them. The right tampered with them. The right is saying we checked them. We're holding you accountable. And now you're swapping them out. So there is your circumstance here. Choose your side, I suppose. Of course, you know where my bias lies. Let's read. They say Arizona's Maricopa County announced Monday that it plans to replace all of the voting machines that were turned over to the state Senate and other officials overseeing the audit of the 2020 presidential election results. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors released its response to a May letter from Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs in which she expressed concerns regarding the security and integrity of these machines. Given that the chain of custody, a critical security tenant, has been compromised and election officials do not know what was done to the machines while under Cyber Ninja's control. I actually think it's kind of fair. You've got a third party group doing an audit. OK, I guess you got to change the machines. But there's, there definitely needs to be a public group, an independent investigation, that goes through these machines just because it's an election. I mean, why wouldn't we? In response, the county told Hobbs it shares your concerns and added that the board acknowledges the secretary of state's authority 
as Arizona's chief election officer to determine what equipment is acceptable for use in Arizona's elections. Accordingly, I write to notify you that Maricopa County will not use the subpoenaed election equipment in any future election, Monday's letter added. In a press release announcing the decision, the county vowed to never use equipment that could pose a risk to free and fair elections. The announcement comes after the Arizona Senate in April acquired the voting machines from Dominion Voting Systems. In addition to nearly 2.1 million ballots and voter information from the November 3rd election, through a court-approved subpoena as part of its election recount, the Arizona Senate turned over the voting machines to Cyber Ninjas, the firm contracted to oversee the audit, to determine if any of the equipment had been hacked or manipulated. A previous independent audit ordered by Maricopa County has already found that there were no irregularities or issues with the voting machines or their tabulation of votes. The Cyber Ninjas audit was spurred by Republicans in the state, state who expressed concerns over the validity and integrity of the county's election results and repeated unsubstantiated claims of widespread fraud in the 2020 election that have been advanced by former President Trump. Hobbs, among other Democrats and voting analysts, have condemned the ongoing audit which has lasted much longer than previously anticipated as a partisan move based on unfounded conspiracy theories. The Secretary of State last month specifically sought to address the concerns on the voting machines that were obtained and reviewed by cyber ninjas, which has had no prior experience in auditing elections. The firm's CEO, Doug Logan, has spread conspiracy theories on the 2020 election in Arizona and now deleted tweets. So let me just pause for a second. You see how they add these things to poison the well? Cyber ninjas has no experience auditing elections. When was the last time we had an election audit? How often do election audits happen? How many companies have experience doing that? It's kind of a weird thing to say. Now, I'll tell you this. We should audit every state, all 50 of them. I'm not kidding. If we want confidence in this system and you are trying to convince ardent Trump supporters that believe that, you know, that who don't like Joe Biden, you want to convince them that Joe Biden is the president, you do the audit. You spend the money. What's the alternative? Conflict, fighting, violence? We don't want that. So you can spend money on, on bullets and APCs, or you can do an audit. They've done some reviews of the elections, but this is a legitimate hard audit. You've got constant surveillance, constant security, three different groups checking each ballot. So they're being checked three times. It'll be interesting to see what they come out with, but that won't come out for a few months. So we'll see. In the meantime, we have, well, we have more news. Arizona audit boss claims CIA may have produced disinformation on election fraud in new film. You know what, man? This is a fight for ideology. There are going to be a lot of people who will make claims in an attempt to preempt any findings. Guess what? Maybe in Arizona, they didn't find anything. And so already they're going to come out and make claims. Well, the Democrats are already making those claims to hedge what may come out. In fact, several articles, I think one was from Slate. They were like, it's seeming increasingly likely that Arizona is going to claim that Trump is the real winner or something to that effect. OK, whatever. We live in the truly stupidest of times. But there are real world problems we need to focus on. It's not just about controversy over an audit or what a Trump supporter said. Check this out. From Stars and Stripes, Texas governor sends 500 National Guard troops to border for humanitarian crisis. Yeah, Texas doesn't have confidence in what the federal government is doing. This story is from March 9th, 2021. Hey, my birthday, by the way. They, they did this because when Joe Biden got in, he said, not nah, of the wall. He started bringing in more illegal immigrants, or I should say he increased the pull factor by saying he was going to be helping people out by ending Trump's Remain in Mexico policies, which officially ended July 1st. And so Texas was forced to act. We then saw Ron DeSantis, June 25th. He was going to be he, he will be sending 50 state police officers to assist Texas on the southern border. Amazing. Why? Why is Florida getting involved? And now there's this from Newsweek. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem to send National Guard troops to Texas border. What's happening on the border that's resulting in these states feeling the need to intervene? I'm sure many Democrats would just say, oh, they're just doing that to make, you know, Biden look bad. But we have a border crisis. We know we do. We know we have a border crisis. And Biden and Jen Psaki and these, and, and these government officials, they know it too. And so Kamala Harris is finally going to the border. Why? Because Donald Trump is going to the border. What are they doing about it? The things that the Biden administration has done has made things worse. And because they will not assist Texas, other states are stepping up. This is what scares me. South Dakota sends troops to Texas. 
Florida sends pol- uh, state troopers to Texas. We are seeing states assist other states who are at odds with the federal government. Newsweek reports. No, a Republican made the announcement on Twitter on Monday. She becomes the latest GOP governor to pledge assistance to Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Arizona's Governor Doug Ducey uh, invoked the Emergency Management Assistance Compact on June 10th. Tomorrow morning, I'm officially announcing up to 50 National Guard troops to Texas to help secure our border, Nome wrote. The Biden administration has failed to keep America safe. We shouldn't be making our own communities, communities vulnerable by sending police to fix Biden's border crisis. OK, maybe the Democrats will come out and they will say, this is just an attempt to make Biden look bad. The problem isn't really that bad. Who needs South Dakota? You see what's happening? If that's true, it's worse than you realize. It's bad enough if Joe Biden's dropping the ball and Texas is panicking. It's worse if they're sending troops because they're actually just at political odds and trying to win office. That's where we're at. So it's worrying to me that we're, we're, we're inching closer towards some kind of breakup. Here's the story from KREM2 CBS. This is from June 3rd. They don't want us. They don't have to have us. Seven rural counties back seceding from Oregon. The greater Idaho movement is pushing for at least 18 counties to leave their home state and join Idaho. I mentioned this in a previous segment. And those listening on the audio podcast, you'll hear this in an, in an upcoming segment. This says to me that people are starting to get serious. The conversations are traveling. And the more people see things like this, you know, they actually voted to secede. The more they'll feel confident that they, too, can challenge the system and say enough. And what happens then? Is Oregon going to have to send in police? Here's what I'm trying to show you. You see what happens at the Texas border. You see South Dakota and Florida say we will intervene. What happens if these seven rural counties in Oregon say we, we no longer recognize the state of Oregon as having jurisdiction over us? So they stop paying taxes, stop complying. Will Oregon call in help from, say, California's National Guard? What if they do? What if Washington What if they say to Washington, we need some National Guard to come down here and quell the rebellion? It's possible. It's possible they say we need interstate compact assistance. Now, it seems improbable. I think nobody wants to believe this stuff's happening, but it is. From the AP, California bans state travel to Florida and four other states. The AP reports, California added five more states, including Florida, to the list of places where state funded travel is banned because of laws that discriminate against members of the LGBTQ community. The state attorney general announced Monday. Democratic Attorney General Rob Bonta added Florida, Arkansas, Montana, North Dakota and West Virginia to the list that now has 17 states where state employee travel is forbidden, except under limited circumstances. Quote, make no mistake. We're in the midst of an unprecedented wave of bigotry and discrimination in this country, and the state of California is not going to support it. Lawmakers in 2016 banned non-essential travel to states with laws that discriminate against the LGBTQ community. The 12 other states on the list are Texas, Alabama, Idaho, Iowa, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Kentucky, North Carolina, Kansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. The five states newly added to the list have introduced bills in their legislatures this year that prevent transgender women and girls from participating in school sports consistent with their gender identity, block access to health care, and allow the discrimination of the LGBTQ community, community, Bonta said. Florida, Montana, Arkansas, and West Virginia passed laws that prevent, okay, we we already read that. North Dakota signed into law a bill allowing certain publicly funded student organizations to restrict LGBTQ students from joining without losing funding. I'm not here to make a judgment call on those states. Or necessarily on California, simply to point out that these states are asserting what they will not support and what they challenge. And California is saying, then we will not be working with you. So where does all of that lead? I think when you see the political strife and now you'll start seeing the economic strife, these things will mix together in a pot and people will say, I've had enough, whether it's the left or the right. How many people do you think in California are saying these bigoted, awful states, 18 percent of the population is getting 50 senators? That is not fair. And I've had enough. And how many people on the right are going to say we are sick of the big cities claiming that they control this country just because they outvote their rural populations does not give them the right to seize government. You see where it's going. Yeah, it's true. 
The blue states have massive population centers. But take those blue cities out of those states, and they're all red states. They're all red. And that's it. They'll claim, oh, we've got X amount of people in this state, and it's blue. Yeah, well, half of them are Democrats. The fact is, Trump gets 74 million votes. Biden gets 81 million. You can make arguments about what you think or what you don't think. That's the number that gets reported. I certainly think, because I've seen a bunch of really dumb people with no business in politics voting, people I know to have no idea what they're talking about voting for Biden. I believe it. I do. I should say it's the, it's the only thing I can say. Let's get the evidence out there and we'll talk about it. For the time being, it doesn't seem to be that there's anything substantive. But there are audits happening. There are claims. I'm told to buckle up. I will. Until then, I don't know what you want me to say. But I will say this. Gas prices hit seven year high as stations run low on fuel ahead of the 4th of July. The New York Post reports. The nationwide average price for a gallon of regular gas at 309 on Monday, the highest Americans have been asked to shell out ahead of the holiday weekend since 2014, according to data from the American Automobile Association. AAA forecasts that 43.6 million Americans will travel by car this weekend. Quote, today, 89% of U.S. gas stations are selling regular unleaded for 275 or more. That is a stark increase of the last 4th of July, when only a quarter of stations were selling gas for more than 225. Jeanette McGee, AAA spokesperson, said road trippers will pay the most to fill up for the holiday since 2014. And there's no sign of prices cooling off, with AAA saying that prices at the pump will likely continue to rise through the end of summer. So what caused this? In 2021, gas is on the rise. Now, in 2018, gas went up, stopped short of $3, leveled off a little bit lower, and then went down dramatically. In 2019, it went up a little bit before the summer and then went down again. It's on average higher now. Of course, many people are blaming Joe Biden for this. I'm not super concerned about whose fault it is. What I'm concerned about is this will cause economic strife. You get someone who makes 15 bucks an hour. They got to pay for gas to get to work. They got to buy a bus ticket. That means gas. When gas goes up, everything else has to go up. Now the guy who gets 15 bucks an hour and is like, we did it. We won $15 an hour says 15 bucks an hour ain't buying me anything. I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my bills. I need more. Economic strife will come. And when people struggle to feed themselves and pay their rent, and you add on this political controversy, you will get lots of very angry people looking for that outlet. The riots we saw last year with George Floyd, many people said that it was actually the lockdowns. People were mad about George Floyd for sure, but they had pent up rage from being locked in their cubicle apartments for months, and they finally snapped. As it goes, when 40% of someone's income goes towards food, so they say, that's when a revolution happens. And apparently we're getting close to that. So what do we do? I am fairly optimistic. I know this has been a fairly pessimistic segment, but for all of the negative, I think we may be dealing with some very serious hardship moving forward, but the night is always darkest before the dawn. We could see these very serious struggles in the end, I do think we're going to be freer and safer because of it. I do not believe the evil will succeed. They may gain ground. They may, they may gain control for some time, but in the long run, I think we're going to be okay. I really do. I mean, things are bad. We've got the story from CNN, millions of jobs and a shortage of applicants. Welcome to the new economy. That's right. We're hiring here at TimCast.com, and it's actually been hard to hire certain jobs. There's a lot of jobs up for grabs. A lot of people who don't want those jobs or aren't working or aren't applying. So what's happening? Where are the people at? The political conflict isn't dying down. These people being interviewed by CNN are saying it's going to get bad. Should I care about what some old people, you know, older people at a Trump rally have to say? Maybe not. Maybe young people won't do anything and don't care and life is just comfortable for them. Or maybe it's not. Maybe food prices are going up. Maybe more lockdowns are underway. They're saying the Delta variant. We got to wear masks and social distance again. Maybe that will lead to people saying, I've had enough and I just can't take it anymore. And then you look at what's happening ideologically. Sure, people might get mad about not having coffee for breakfast. They might get mad because they can't afford to buy bacon or bacon's not showing up or they can't buy gas. But then they see something rage inducing and ideological and they say, that's the problem. It's your fault. And then it gets serious. 
I do not believe right now that Donald Trump will be president in August. I think that's ridiculous. Maybe he'll win in 2024. Some people are talking about Republicans winning the House and then making Trump Speaker of the House. That would be hilarious. For the time being, I just don't see it. So what are these people going to do when it doesn't happen? Are they just going to go away or are they going to keep up the news and the conversations that drives them angrier and angrier? I don't know. I just know this. It was almost three years ago we heard about the cold civil war from that Princeton professor. We saw battles in the street. It's only gotten worse to the highest levels of government now. So is something coming? Maybe. But I certainly think it will not be what you expect it will be. I don't think it's going to look like what you think it will look like. But I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not a psychic. I get a lot of things wrong. I get some things right. When I get things right, I'm pretty surprised. You know, like, wow, that's scary. But I think a lot of people on the left and the right believe we're headed towards some kind of very serious disaster. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.